Well, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for your attendance. And know that you are very tired after this, these days of discussion, but I think we, we have to continue. And I just want to remember that we were colonized by Europe, so some of the results that we are seeing probably are consequence of this influence. Uh, first of all, I would like to show my disclosure of interest. Uh, I'm invited speaker for many industries. I have some research grants, but I do not allow any interference in this content. Well, as you know, the majority of the population in the world now has a possibility of being or malnourished or obese, and I would like very much to show this kind of picture because we have seen that the poverty in the majority of the world is related to really malnutrition, but the poverty that we are seeing in Americas now are related to obesity. And we have seen that this is a result of the increasing of obesity and overweight all over the world. As you can see in South America, we are exactly in the same situation that we have in some parts of United States, and especially in Canada and other places, and we are increasing the numbers of obese people, and we are counting because our results are late, and so we have to wait for the next tendency. Based on that, I would like to show you this slide when we see the trends and the trends of obesity in the next 15 years, and you see that Latin America and the Caribbean are probably expecting a huge number of individuals that will be overweight or obese. And this is probably the most important situation that we'll have in the near future. But we have to remember also that Latins and African American also are being in the same situation, especially in developing countries, excluding, of course, the refugees. But what we can see in, in Latin America is that we are passing in the intermediate and late stages of transition, but because the population is getting older, we are facing high morbidity and high mortality for chronic disease, but we are also facing the encounter of the new and the old infectious disease, as Zika, Chikungunya, and Malaria, and Dengue, again, so we are modifying our results based on that. We have a high mortality in youngers by means of violence, and also we have an increased access and affordability of foods away from home, foods that are ready to eat and industrial food, and of course, based on the situation that we have seen all over the world, we have a decrease of general physical activity, besides that we are matching numbers that we've seen that the majority of our population, especially from middle class and high class, are enrolled in structure physical activity, but the intensity of this physical activity is not enough. I would like to come back in time, as even in, in front of an anthropologist, I would like to go back and tell you something about the culture of food patterns in South America. As you know, we have more than 6 million, uh, 600 million inhabitants, and we are a result of these Colombian and pre-Columbian cultures. We can divide the situation in three great groups. The groups that we've seen here that are based on the Amazon tribes and the, um, the groups that are comparable to these tribes, the Mapuche civilization and the Guarani civilization. But we have to compare the tribes that were in the middle of South America, especially the influence of Aztecs, Mayan, and Inca. Based on that, we can divide the influence in two different groups. The first native inhabitants with very high development at this time, the, the, the beginning of the discovery, and we have to, at the same time, to cope with the natives in different areas of South America that have very, very low skills, and they were very underdeveloped comparing to this civilization. But when we talk about food, the food was very influenced based on the, the cultures that were possible to have at this time, especially the fishing, hunting, and gathering in this situation. These were the situation when the first Europeans arrived in our culture, and so the first 
native food were mixed with the first European food that arrived with the great navigators. Usually French navigators, Dutch navigators, but those who were very important to the population of this area were the Spanish and the Portuguese. They divided the world in two, and we in Latin America were divided also in two, the Portuguese influence and the Spanish influence. We combined the, the native situation of foods from the native Indians or the native Aztecs, the native Mayans and Aztecs, or the underdeveloped Indians of our region, together with the influence or of this Portuguese or of the Spanish situation. And at the beginning of the 17th century, when we first received the first African slaves, we modified at all the culture, especially in the Portuguese-related areas. And the slaves modified very much the population of the, the food aspects of our region because the Europeans gave them just food wastes and they had to, fight, to face a culture of survival, and especially because they were receiving very small amounts of food. This is very similar to what you see in Central America and what you see in, in the United States, but especially the, the difference that we had in the Portuguese-related influence is that they mixed, something that didn't occur in Central America and at the beginning in the United States. Well, so we can see that probably the Europeans and the Asians that arrived lately uh, in our countries expected to find thriving lands, labor and fertile lands for agriculture and livestock, but probably they didn't find exactly what they were looking for, and they had to adapt their own cultures to the positively cultures that they have in their origin. So our food cultures was based on native origin, especially on wheat, corn, meat, fish, and seafood, and manioc. And this food was modified by the European influence, Spanish or Portuguese, and secondarily by English, Dutch, and much more by the African culture influence. And recently, by the new waves of immigration, especially German, Italian, Japanese, and other Asian population. So in Latin America, we can see that the food habits, we have different meal occasions based on the original colonization, Portuguese or Spanish, with early or late hours of meal. Breakfast on the road or at home, main meals away from home. We have the legend of siesta, that is something that accompanied us for many, many, many years, but we don't have it, and we are coping with meal skipping all the time. I just want to be very brief and talking about some of the difference that we've seen in some countries, and I'll go back to Brazil. Brazil is a melting pot of cultural influence. We had very, very, very few influence of the native Indians, only in the north part of the country. We have some kind of influence of the natives, but usually the European influence, especially the Portuguese, was modified by the food that was brought by the culture of slaves. So we have native, Portuguese, and African. But when we see the, the cultural map of Brazil, we have many different foods, from the fish in the north to the meat in the south. So we have to cope with many, many different possible occasions of eating based on what we had possibility of achieving or not. So why in Brazil we have a cultural assimilation of all the, the, the people who have arrived in the, our countries, especially Japanese, Italian, German, Latins, we, we especially eating food by meat, and especially based on Arabian cultural influence that we've seen in the last years. The consequence of that is that we have chronic disease situation exactly like we have in the United States of Europe. We have a high level of overweight, a high level of obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and hypercholesterolemia. This is the same situation that we have in Argentina. Argentina has the same type of influence, but we have to take out the African influence. So they have the natives, together influenced by the European at the beginning, especially the Spanish, and after that the German, Asian, and especially in the last years, Italian and other cultures. 
So the cultural heritage in, in, and the food heritage in Argentina is a combination of native patterns with the Spanish influence by colonization and later European migration, especially German, Italian, East European, Asian, Arabian, and is based on potato, corn, wheat, car, meat, wheat and milk, and later enriched by their uh, European and Latin American recipes. The chronic diseases in Argentina is a very similar to Brazil with low level of physical activity. As you see, almost half a percent of the population have low levels, high levels of obesity, overweight, hypertension, diabetes, and hypercholesterolemia. When you go to Chile, Chile is very different from our situation because they have used the seafood culture and they have different native public living in this area. And the risk factors of chronic disease in Chile is increasing very much in the last years, especially the influence of obesity. Obesity is much higher than all the countries in the region. You see a lot of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, and high cardiovascular risks. When we see what they are eating, they have low intake of fish and seafood because they are exporting the majority of their goods. Especially they have low intake of legumes, especially in adolescents, low intake of vegetables and fruits, low intake of insaturated fat, and high intake of sugar and sweets based on the less surveys. In Colombia, we have a very different situation because they are basing their food on the natives of the area that were not the underdeveloped natives, but they were the consequences of the influence of Maya and Aztecas and sometimes the inter-trade that they have with the civilization, but we have exactly the same results, and we have one culture that is based on arepa, rice, potato, and banana tradition, modified by the local tradition and modified by the type of modification of the foods that arrive with the new migrants. Uh, this is the food intake. And we can go up to Central America, and Costa Rica represents some part of the Central America. They have also a huge number of hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia, hypertension, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, ob abdominal obesity, overweight and obesity, and exactly the same numbers of physical inactivity represented by sedentarism. Based on that, we have to remember that Costa Rica and other countries in Central America represents a passageway between civilizations, Inca, Maya, and Aztecs, and they were the culture of corn, cocoa, beans, and pitch palm, and enriched by hunting, by fishing, by using of uh, salvage animals, and other birds and fishes that they have at this time. During colony, especially the Iberian origin, they were modifying their foods by the taking out of the customs of wheat, rice, oats, sugar cane, coffee, cotton, that arrives exactly in the principle of the colonization, together with fruits, cattle, pigs, and poultry farming. Some of the recipes that you see at this region is the combination of rice and beans. That is the, exactly the same combination that we have in other countries of South America. Tamales, it's exactly the same modification of corn, meal, saffron rice, pork, and a variety of vegetables. And picadillos, is chopped vegetables with or without meat. When we go to Ecuador, we have the same civilization, the Inca civilization, based their nutrition and production and consumption of corn, along with tubers cultivation, especially tomato. The meat arrived from the llama, uh, meat, and fruits that were gathering at that time. The influence of the Europeans in Ecuador were very early in their colonization status, especially because the kings of Spain modified by the royal audience of Quito in only the beginning of the 16th century, the introduction of other foods like wheat, pork, milk, cheese, first bread, and beer, of course, during this modification. Based on that, the Qualification of the chronic diseases in, in Ecuador are exactly the same. We have high numbers of diabetes, insulin resistance, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, metabolic syndrome, and abdominal obesity. 
Going to Venezuela, that we have to compare the Venezuela from the beginning of the colonization with Venezuela that uh, has modified the situation in the last 20 years. Well, some of the results of the last 20 years are probably here. We have an increase of heart diseases, cancer, stroke, and diabetes, but not so important the numbers as in Argentina or in Brazil, but we have to decide if we trust the numbers or not. And we, these are the numbers for morbidity, especially I would like to emphasize the number of diabetes, especially over 25 years of age. But we have a lot of people who are under nutrition below 15 years of age, a lot of overweight, hypertension, and ischemic disease. The food heritage in Venezuela is the culture of corn in terms of arepa, the yuca, the cassava, the cocoa, chocolate, the ayacas, and the many other plates that are a combination of the, uh, the foods that were available from the times of the colony and the modification that we have by the globalization of the last time. Peru is something that is different because they are receiving a very strong influence of Japanese in the last 30 years, especially when they increase the, 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 the cultural uh, modification of their foods using their native colonies, and especially when they use the, the modification of this uh, traditional uh, Japanese origin, and now they are increasing their modification of that. Well, the next big issue in this region is the, probably the ultra-processed foods that are driving obesity epidemic in Latin America. This is a status shared by the Pan American Organization and World Health Organization, and I would like especially to emphasize the new classification of processed food. It's called NOVA. NOVA is an, not an acronym, it's an, a name that was given by the researchers who were doing that. And they probably are confounding some of the items. They are confounding that the ultra-processed food is a synonym of industrial food. Probably they are saying that home-prepared food is always good, and they are saying that industrialization of this food is always bad. In South America, the, there are several large multicenter studies that have been conducted in order to, in, to understand these modifications of food, of nutritional, physical activity status of the population. But the majority of these studies were performed separately and unified later. There are no representative samples for this region. These are some of the last results that we have in some of the region. Usually, they are based on uh, surveys that were dedicated by some governments, like in Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, and Chile, and they were unified after that by the PAHO or, South, or other organizations, and they were put together. All the methodology were different. They were not using the same tools, and so it's not very easy to compare all this data. Based on that, the lack of studies that combine nutrition and physical activity assessment in representative samples of Latin America now, we know that there is no Latin American study using a central standard methodology across a group of participating countries. Based on that, we established the Latin America study in nutrition and health that was established in eight countries, in late, eight Latin American countries, 40% of the region population, during a one-year period with more than 9,000 subjects in a representative sample of the urban household population of each country. It was, this sample was certified, certified by geographical location, only urban areas by gender, age, and socioeconomic status from 15 to 65 years of age. The variables were nutritional intake by 224 hours intake dietary recall with multiple pass methodology, one beverage intake questionnaire by food frequency, what we evaluated the anthropometry and the expenditure by questionnaires and by accelerometry, and we have evaluated only one software for food composition for all region. Uh, we started with food and beverage standardization of all the foods that were in, available in Latin America. As we know, there are differences in, in the composition of tables in all the countries, and we have tried to evaluate the 300 most important food in each country 
to see if they were possible to be evaluated by one uh, table, like the USDA table, and we had standardized all these foods for Latin America, so we have worked in more than 4,700 preparations based on all the countries, and we have recipes and an agreement with the USDA table for more than 90% to 120%. The first results that we have in the Latin American survey shows that we have very high levels of obesity, especially from Argentina, Chile, Brazil, and some other countries that were less, less important for obesity, like in Peru, but we have to understand the socioeconomic diversity is very different among these countries. Uh, we have very strong numbers, on, of, uh, especially in males and females, and we can see that, especially in Chile, the overweight and obesity levels are very high, in the, based especially on some populations, especially in socioeconomic levels that are very low. These are some of the initial uh, data that we have, and we can see that the energy intake is not very different from the countries, but we have seen that especially the countries that have higher levels of obesity and of overweight have reported very low numbers of usual intake. We know that we have a huge numbers of people who are under-reporting, so we have to try to understand at all what it is, these numbers, and we are evaluating and we are adjusting these numbers for 1,000 calories and for other populations. Uh, the activity levels in our region is exactly what we are, we are expecting. We have a huge number of people so with sedentary levels, and so we are just showing here the sitting time for our adults and adolescents, and we see that they stay almost half of the time sitting and without any kind of intensity that could be comparable to moderate or intense physical activity. This is our, our initial results, and we are getting data lately probably, and in the last two or three months, we are showing you the results of all this study. This is our team, the scientific teams in Latin America. This is our group, and I would like to acknowledge this or population, these organizations, these universities, and, and you see in South America, North Indian, in Brazil, and other countries, and I would like to thank you very much. Bye. -bye.